Act Two of Women Beware Women. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Women Beware Women by Thomas Middleton. Act Two. Scene One. Enter Hippolyto and Lady Livia, the widow. A strange affection, brother. When I think on't, I wonder how thou camest by it. Even as easily as man comes by destruction, which oft times he wears in his own bosom. Is the world so populous in women, and creation so prodigal in beauty, and so various? Yet does love turn thy point to thine own blood? Tis somewhat too unkindly. Must thy eye dwell evilly on the fairness of thy kindred, and seek not where it should? It is confined now in a narrower prison than was made for it. It is allowed a stranger, and where bounty is made to the great man's honour, tis ill husbandry to spare, and servants shall have small thanks for it. So he heaven's bounty seems to scorn and mock that spares free means, and spends of his own stock. Ne'er was man's misery so soon sewed up, counting how truly. Nay. I love you so, that I shall venture much to keep a change from you, so fearful as this grief will bring upon you. Faith, it even kills me when I see you faint under a reprehension, and I'll leave it, though I know nothing can be better for you. Prithee, sweet brother, let not passion waste the goodness of thy time, and of thy fortune. Thou keep'st the treasure of that life I love as dearly as mine own. And if you think my former words too bitter, which were ministered by truth and zeal, tis but a hazarding of grace and virtue, and I can bring forth as pleasant fruits as sensuality wishes in all her teeming longings, this I can do. Oh, nothing that can make my wishes perfect. I would that love of yours were pawned to it, brother and as soon lost that way as I could win. Sir, I could give as shrewd a lift to chastity as any she that wears a tongue in Florence. She'd need be a good horsewoman, and sit fast, whom my strong argument could not fling at last. Prithee, take courage, man. Though I should counsel another to despair, yet I am pitiful to thy afflictions, and will venture hard. I will not name for what. It is not handsome. Find you the proof, and praise me. Then I fear me I shall not praise you in haste. This is the comfort. You are not the first brother has attempted things more forbidden than this seems to be. I'll minister all cordials now to you, because I'll cheer you up, sir. I'm past hope. Love, thou shalt see me do a strange cure, then, as e'er was wrought on a disease so mortal and near akin to shame. When shall you see her? Never in comfort more. You're so impatient, too. Will you believe? Death, she hath forsworn my company, and sealed it with a blush. So, I perceive all lies upon my hands, then. Well, the more glory when the work's finished. How now, sir, the news? Enter servant. Madam, your niece, the virtuous Isabella, is lighted now to see you. That's great fortune. Sir, your stars bless you. Simple, lead her in. Exit servant. What's this to me? Your absence, gentle brother, I must bestir my wits for you. Ay, to great purpose. Exit Hippolito beshrew you. Would I loved you not so well? I'll go to bed and leave this deed undone. I am the fondest where I once affect, the carefulest of their healths and of their case, forsooth, that I look still but slenderly to mine own. I take a course to pity him so much now that I have none left for modesty and myself. This tis to grow so liberal. You few sisters that love their brother's case above their own honesties. But if you question my affections, that will be found my fault. Enter Isabella. Niece, your love's welcome. Alas! What draws that paleness to thy cheeks? This enforced marriage towards? 
It helps, good aunt, amongst some other griefs, but those I'll keep locked up in modest silence, for their sorrows would shame the tongue more than they grieve the thought. Indeed, the ward is simple. Simple? That were well. Why, one might make good shift with such a husband, but he's a fool entailed. He halts down right in and knowing this i hope tis at your choice to take or refuse niece you see it is not i loathe him more than beauty can hate death or age her spiteful neighbour let it appear then how can i being born with that obedience that must submit under a father's will if he command i must of force consent alas poor soul be not offended prithee if i set by the name of niece a while and bring in pity in a stranger fashion. It lies here in this breast, would cross this match. How? Cross it, aunt. Ay, and give thee more liberty than thou hast reason yet to apprehend. Sweet aunt, in goodness keep not hid from me what may befriend my life. Yes, yes, I must when I return to reputation, and think upon the solemn vow I made to your dead mother, my most loving sister. As long as I've her memory twixt mine eyelids, look for no pity now. Kind, sweet, dear aunt. No, twas a secret I have took special care of, delivered by your mother on her deathbed. That's nine years now, and I'll not part from it yet, though ne'er was fitter time nor greater cause for it. As you desire the praises of a virgin. Good sorrow! I would do thee any kindness not wronging secrecy your reputation. Neither of which, as I have hope of fruitfulness, shall receive wrong from me. Nay, twould be your own wrong. As much as any, should it come to that once. I need no better means to work persuasion, then. Let it suffice. You may refuse this fool, or you may take him as you see occasion for your advantage. The best wits will do it. You've liberty enough in your own will. You cannot be enforced. There grows the flower, if you could pick it out, makes whole life sweet to you. That which you call your father's commands are nothing. Then your obedience must needs be as little. If you can make shift here to taste your happiness, or pick out aught that likes you, much good do you. You see your cheer. I'll make you no set dinner. And trust me, I may starve for all the good I can find yet in this. Sweet aunt, deal plainlier. Say, I should trust you now upon an oath, and give you in a secret that would start you. How am I sure of you in faith and silence? Equal assurance may I find in mercy, as you for that in me. It shall suffice. Then know, however custom has made good for reputation's sake, the names of niece and aunt twixt you and I were nothing less. How's that? I told you I should start your blood. You are no more allied to any of us, save what the courtesy of opinion casts upon your mother's memory and your name, than the merest stranger is, or one begot at Naples when the husband lies at Rome. There's so much odds betwixt us. Since your knowledge wished more instruction, and I have your oath in pledge for silence, it makes me talk the freelier. Did ne'er the report of that famed Spaniard, Marquis of Coria, since your time was ripe for understanding, fill your ear with wonder? Yes, what of him? I have heard his deeds of honour often related when we lived in Naples. You heard the praises of your father, then? My father? That was he. But all the business so carefully and so discreetly carried, that fame received no spot by it not a blemish. Your mother was so wary to her end, none knew it but her conscience and her friend. Till penitent confession made it mine, and now my pity yours. It had been long else, and I hope care and love alike in you, made good by oath, will see it take no wrong now. How weak his commands now whom you call father! How vain all his enforcements your obedience! and what a largeness in your will and liberty to take or to reject, or to do both. For fools will serve to father wise men's children. All this you've time to think on. 
Oh, my wench! Nothing o'erthrows our sex but indiscretion. We might do well else of a brittle people as any under the great canopy. I pray forget not but to call me aunt still. Take heed of that. It may be marked in time else. But keep your thoughts to yourself from all the world, kindred, or dearest friend. Nay, I entreat you from him that all this while you have called uncle. And though you love him dearly, as I know his deserts claim as much e'en from a stranger, yet let not him know this. I prithee do not. As ever thou hast hope of second pity, if thou shouldst stand in need on't, do not do it. Believe my oath, I will not. Why, well said. Aside, who shows more craft to undo a maiden head, I'll resign my part to her. To Hippolito, as he is entering, she's thine own. Go. To Livia. Alas, fair flattery cannot cure my sorrows. Exit Livia. Aside. Have I passed so much time in ignorance, and never had the means to know myself till this blessed hour? Thanks to her virtuous pity that brought it now to light. But I had known it but one day sooner. He had then received in favours what, poor gentleman, he took in bitter words, a slight and harsh reward for one of his deserts. Aside. There seems to me now more anger and distraction in her looks. I'm gone. I'll not endure a second storm. The memory of the first is not past yet. Aside. Are you returned, you comforts of my life? In this man's presence I will keep you fast now, and sooner part eternally from the world than my good joys in you. To Hippolito. Prithee, forgive me. I did but chide and jest. The best loves use it sometimes. It sets an edge upon affection. When we invite our best friends to a feast, tis not all sweetmeats that we set before them. They're somewhat sharp and salt, both to whet appetite, and make them taste their wine well. So, methinks, after a friendly, sharp, and savoury chiding, a kiss tastes wondrous well, and full of the grape. How thinkest thou? Dost not? Kisses him. Tis so excellent, I know not how to praise it, what to say to it. This marriage shall go forward. With the ward? Are you in earnest? Twould be ill for us else. Aside. For us? How means she that? Troth, I begin to be so well, methinks, within this hour, for all this match, able to kill one's heart. Nothing can hold me down now. Should my father provide a worse fool yet, which I should think were a hard thing to compass, I'd have him either, the worse the better. None can come amiss now, if he want wit enough. So discretion love me, desert and judgment, I have content sufficient. She that comes once to be a housekeeper, must not look every day to farewell, sir, like a young waiting gentlewoman in service, for she feeds commonly as her lady does. No good bit passes her, but she gets a taste on't. But when she comes to keep house for herself, she's glad of some choice cakes than once a week, or twice at most, and glad if she can get em. So must affection learn to fare with thankfulness. Pray make your love no stranger, sir, that's all. Aside. Though you be one yourself, and know not aunt, and I have sworn you must not. Exit. This is beyond me. Never came joy so unexpectedly to meet desires in man. How came she thus? What has she done to her? Can any tell? Tis beyond sorcery, this, drugs or love-powders. Some art that hast no name, sure, strange to me of all the wonders I e'er met with all throughout my ten years' travel. But I'm thankful for it. This marriage now must of necessity forward. It is the only veil wit can devise to keep our axe hid from sin-piercing eyes. Exit. Scene two. Livia's house. A chess-board is set out. Enter Guardiano and Livia. How, sir? A gentlewoman so young, so fair as you set forth, spied from the widow's window. She. Our Sunday dinner woman. And Thursday supper woman, the same still. I know not how she came by her, but I'll swear she's the prime gallant for a face in Florence, and no doubt other parts follow their leader. The duke himself first spied her at the window. 
then in a rapture as if admiration were poor when it were single beckoned me and pointed to the wonder warily as one that feared she would draw in her splendour too soon if too much gazed at i ne'er knew him so infinitely taken with a woman nor can i blame his appetite or tax his raptures of slight folly she's a creature able to draw a state from serious business and make it their best piece to do her service what course shall we devise taz spoke twice now twice tis beyond your apprehension how strangely that one look has catched his heart twould prove but too much worth in wealth and favour to those should work his peace and if i do it not or at least come as near it if your art will take a little pains and second me as any wench in florence of my standing i'll quite give o'er and shut up shop in cunning tis for the duke and if i fail your purpose all means to come by riches or advancement miss me and skip me over let the old woman then be sent for with all speed then i'll begin a good conclusion follow and a sweet one after this stale beginning with old ware within there enter servant sir do you call come near list hither whispers i long myself to see this absolute creature that wins the heart of love and praise so much go sir make haste say i entreat her company do you hear sir yes madame exit that brings her quickly i would twere done the duke waits the good hour and i wait the good fortune that may spring from it i have had a lucky hand these fifteen year at such court passage with three dice in a dish signor fabrizio enter fabrizio ah sir i bring an alteration in my mouth now an alteration aside no wise speech i hope he means not to talk wisely does he trow good what's the change i pray sir a new change another yet faith there's enough already my daughter loves him now what does she sir affects him beyond thought who but the ward forsooth no talk but of the ward she would have him to choose above all the men she ever saw my will goes not so fast as her consent now her duty gets before my command still why then sir if you'll have me speak my thoughts i smell twill be a match ay and a sweet young couple if i have any judgment aside faith that's little let her be sent to-morrow before noon and handsomely tricked up for about that time i mean to bring her in and tender her to him i warrant you for handsome i will see her things laid ready every one in order and have some part of her tricked up to-night why well said twas a use her mother had when she was invited to an early wedding she'd dress her head all night sponge up herself and give her neck three lathers aside ne'er a halter on with her chain of pearl her ruby bracelets lay ready all her tricks and diggum-bobs so must your daughter i'll about it straight sir exit fabrizio how he sweats in the foolish zeal of fatherhood after six ounces an hour and seems to toil as much as if his cares were wise ones you've let his folly blood in the right vein lady and here comes his sweet son-in-law that shall be they're both allied in wit before the marriage what will they be hereafter when they are nearer yet they can go no further than the fool there's the world's end in both of em enter ward and sordido one with a shuttlecock the other a battledore now young heir what's the next business after shuttlecock now to-morrow you shall see the gentlewoman must be your wife 
There's e'en another thing, too, must be kept up with a pair of battledores. My wife, what can she do? Nay, that's a question you should ask yourself, Ward, when you're alone together. That's as I list. A wife's to be asked anywhere, I hope. I'll ask her in a congregation, if I have a mind to it, and so save a license. My gardener has no more wit than an herb-woman that sells away all her sweet herbs and nosegays, and keeps a stinking breath for her own pottage. Let me be at the choosing of your beloved, if you desire a woman of good parts. Thou shalt, sweet Sordido. I have a plaguy guess. Let me alone to see what she is. If I but look upon her, way, I know all the faults to a hair that you may refuse her for. Dost thou? I prithee, let me hear em, Sordido. Well, mark em, then. I have em all in rhyme. The wife your gardener ought to tender should be pretty, straight, and slender, her hair not short, her foot not long, her hand not huge, nor too too loud her tongue, no pearl in eye, nor ruby in her nose, no burner cut but what the catalogue shows. She must have teeth, and that no black ones, and kiss most sweet when she does smack ones. Her skin must be both white and plump, her body straight, not hopper rumped or wriggle sideways like a crab she must be neither slut nor drab nor go to splayfoot with her shoes to make her smock lick up the dews and two things more which i forgot to tell you she neither must have bump in back nor belly these are the faults that will not make her pass and if i spy not these i am a rank ass <laughs> nay more by right sir you should see her naked, for that's the ancient order. See her naked? That were good sport, if faith. I'll have the books turned over, and if I find her naked on record, she shall not have a rag on. But stay, stay, how if she should desire to see me so too? I were in a sweet case, then, such a foul skin. But you've a clean shirt, and that makes amends, sir. I will not see her naked, for that trick, though. Exit. And take her with all her faults with her clothes on and they may hide a number with a bum roll faith choosing of a wench in a huge farthingale is like the buying of ware under a great penthouse what with the deceit of one and the false light of the other mark my speeches he may have a diseased wench in's bed and rotten stuff in his breeches exit it may take handsomely guardiano goes out and returns almost immediately i see small hindrance how now so soon returned and her mother she's come that's well widow come come i have a great quarrel to you faith i must chide you that you must be sent for you make yourself so strange never come at us and yet so near a neighbour and so unkind troth you're to blame you cannot be more welcome to any house in florence that i'll tell you my thanks must needs acknowledge so much madam how can you be so strange then i sit here sometimes whole days together without company when business draws this gentleman from home and should be happy in society which i so well affect as that of yours i know you're alone too why should not we, like two kind neighbours, then, supply the wants of one another, having tongue discourse, experience in the world, and such kind helps to laugh down time and meet age merrily? Age, madam, you speak mirth. Tis at my door, but a long journey from your ladyship yet. My faith! I'm nine and thirty, every stroke, wench and tis a general observation mongst knights wives or widows we account ourselves then old when young men's eyes leave looking at us tis the true rule amongst us and never failed yet in any but in one that i remember indeed she had a friend at nine and forty marry she paid well for him and in the end he kept a queen or two with her own money that robbed her of her plate and cut her throat she had her punishment in this world madam and a fair warning to all other women that they live chaste at fifty ay or never wench come now i have thy company i'll not part with it till after supper 
"'Yes, I must crave pardon, madam.' "'I swear you shall stay supper. We have no strangers, woman. None but my sojourners and I. This gentleman and the young heir, his ward, you know our company.' "'Some other time I will make a bold with you, madam.' "'Nay, pray stay, widow.' "'Faith, she shall not go. Do you think I'll be forsworn?' "'Tis a great while till supper-time. I'll take my leave then now, madam, and come again in the evening, since your ladyship will have it so." "'In the evening? By my troth, wench, I'll keep you while I have you. You have great business sure to sit alone at home. I wonder strangely what pleasure you take in't. Were it to me now, I should be ever at one neighbour's house or other all day long, having no charge or no one to chide you if you go or stay who may live merrier i or more at heart's ease come we'll to chess or draughts there are an hundred tricks to drive out time till supper never fear it wench i'll but make one step home and return straight madam come i'll not trust you you use more excuses to your kind friends than ever i knew any what business can you have if you be sure you've locked the doors and that being all you have i know you're careful on't one afternoon so much to spend here say i should entreat you now to lie a night or two or a week with me or leave your own house for a month together it were a kindness that long neighbourhood and friendship might well hope to prevail in would you deny such a request of faith speak truth and freely i will then uncivil madam go to then set your men pointing to the chessboard We'll have whole nights of mirth together ere we be much older, wench. Aside. As good now, tell her then, for she will note I have always found her a most friendly lady. Why, widow, where's your mind? Troth, and at home, madam. To tell you truth, I left a gentlewoman and sitting all alone, which is uncomfortable, especially to young bloods. Another excuse? No, as I hope for health, madam, that's the truth. Please you to send and see. What gentlewoman? Pish! Wife to my son, indeed, but not known, madam, to any but yourself. Now I beshrew you. Could you be so unkind to her and me to come and not bring her? Faith, tis not friendly. I feared to be too bold. Too bold? Oh, what's become of the true hearty love was wont to be mongst neighbours in old time? And she's a stranger, madam the more should be her welcome when is courtesy in better practice than when tis employed in entertaining strangers ah oh, i could chide a faith leave her behind poor gentlewoman alone too make some amends and send for her betimes go please you command one of your servants madam within there and her servant madam attend the gentlewoman aside it must be carried wondrously privately for my son's knowledge he'll break out in storms else hark you sir whispers the servant aside to guardiano now comes in the heat of your part true i know it lady and if i be out may the duke banish me from all employments wanton or serious so have you sent widow yes madam he's almost at home by this and faith let me entreat you that henceforward all such unkind faults may be swept from friendship which does but dim the lustre and think thus much it is a wrong to me that have ability to bid friends welcome when you keep em from me you cannot set great dishonour near me for bounty is the credit and the glory of those that have enough i see you're sorry and the good men's is made by it here she is madam Enter Bianca and servant. Aside. I wonder how she comes to send for me now. Gentlewoman, you're most welcome. Trust me you are, as courtesy can make one, or respect due to the presence of you. I give you thanks, lady. I heard you were alone, and it had appeared an ill condition in me, though I knew you not, nor ever saw you, yet humanity thinks every case her own to have kept your company here from you, and left you all solitary. I rather ventured upon boldness, then, as the least fault, and wished your presence here. 
the thing most happily motioned of that gentleman, whom I request you, for his care and pity, to honour and reward with your acquaintance. A gentleman that lady's right stands for. That's his profession. Tis a noble one, and honours my acquaintance. All my intentions are servants to such mistresses. Tis your modesty, it seems, that makes your desert speak so low, sir. Come, widow. To Bianca. Look, you lady, here's our business. Pointing to the chessboard. Are we not well employed, think you? An old quarrel between us that will never be at an end. No. And methinks there's men enough to part you, lady. Oh, but they set us on. Let us come off as well as we can, poor souls. Men care no farther. I pray sit down, forsooth, if you have the patience to look upon two weak and tedious gamesters. Faith, madam, set these by till evening. You'll have enough on then. The gentlewoman, being a stranger, would take more delight to see your rooms and pictures. Marry, good sir, and well remembered. I beseech you show him her. That will beguile time well. Pray heartily do, sir. I'll do as much for you. Here, take these keys. Show her the monument, too. And that's a thing every one sees not. You can witness that, widow. And that's worth sight indeed, madam. Kind lady, I fear I came to be a trouble to you. Oh, nothing less, forsooth. And to this courteous gentleman, that wears a kindness in his breast so noble and bounteous to the welcome of a stranger. If you but give acceptance to my service, you do the greatest grace and honour to me that courtesy can merit. I were to blame else, and out of fashion much. I pray you lead, sir. After a game or two we're for you, gentlefolks. We wish no better seconds in society than your discourses, madam and your partners there i thank you praise i'll listen to you sir though when you spoke there came a paltry rook full in my way and choked up all my game exit guardiano and bianca alas poor widow i shall be too hard for thee you're cunning at a game i'll be sworn madam it will be found so ere i give you over she that can place her man well as you do madam as I shall, wench, can never lose her game. Nay, nay, the black king's mine. Cry you mercy, madam. And this my queen? I see it now. Here's a duke will strike a sure stroke for the game anon. Your pawn cannot come back to relieve itself. I know that, madam. You play well the whilst. How she belies her skill! I hold two ducats, I give you check, and mate your white king, simplicity itself, your saintish king there. Well, ere now, lady, I have seen the fall of subtlety, jest on. Ay, but simplicity's receives two for one. What remedy but patience? Enter Guardiano and Bianca in a gallery above. Trust me, sir, mine eye ne'er met with fairer ornaments. Nay, livelier. I'm persuaded neither Florence nor Venice can produce. Sir, my opinion takes your part highly. There's a better piece yet than all these. The Duke discovered. Not possible, sir. Believe it. You'll say so when you see it. Turn but your eye now. You're upon it presently. Exit. Oh, sir. He's gone, beauty. Pish! Look not after him. He's but a vapour that when the sun appears is seen no more. He takes hold of her. Oh, treachery to honour! Prithee, tremble not. I feel thy breast shake like a turtle panting under a loving hand that makes much on't. Why art so fearful? As I am friend to brightness, there's nothing but respect and honour near thee. You know me. You have seen me. Here's a heart can witness I have seen thee. The more's my danger. The more's thy happiness. Pish! Struggle not, sweet. She struggles to get from him. This strength were excellent employed in love now. But here tis spent amiss. Strive not to seek thy liberty, and keep me still in prison. I faith you shall not out till I am released now. We'll both be freed together, or stay still by it. 
so is captivity pleasant oh my lord i am not here in vain have but the leisure to think on that and thou'lt be soon resolved the lifting of thy voice is but like one that does exalt his enemy who proving high lays all the plots to confound him that raised him take warning i beseech thee thou seemst to me a creature so composed of gentleness and delicate meekness such as bless the faces of figures that are drawn for goddesses and makes art proud to look upon her work i should be sorry the least force should lay an unkind touch upon thee o oh, my extremity my lord what seek you love tis gone already i have a husband that's a single comfort take a friend to him that's a double mischief or else there's no religion do not tremble at fears of thine own making nor great lord make me not bold with death and deeds of ruin because they fear not you me they must fright then am i best in health should thunder speak and none regard it it had lost the name and were as good be still i'm not like those that take their soundest sleeps in greatest tempests then wake i most the weather fearfullest and call for strength to virtue sure i think thou know'st the way to please me i affect a passionate pleading above an easy yielding but never pitied any they deserve none that will not pity me i can command think upon that yet if thou truly knewest the infinite pleasure my affection takes in gentle fair entreatings when love's businesses are carried courteously twixt heart and heart you'd make more haste to please me why should you seek sir to take away that you cannot give but i give better in exchange wealth honour she that is fortunate in a duke's favour lights on a tree that bears all women's wishes if your own mother saw you pluck fruit there she would commend your wit and praise the time of your nativity take hold of glory do not i know you've cast away your life upon necessities me it's merely doubtful to keep you in indifferent health and fashion a thing i heard too lately and soon pitied and can you be so much your beauty's enemy to kiss away a month or two in wedlock and weep whole years in wants for ever after come play the wise wench and provide for ever let storms come when they list they find thee sheltered should any doubt arise let nothing trouble thee put trust in our love for the managing of all to thy heart's peace we'll walk together and show a thankful joy for both our fortunes exit above did not i say my duke would fetch you over widow i think you spoke in earnest when you said it madam and my black king makes all the haste he can too well madam we may meet with him in time yet i have given thee blind mate twice you may see madam my eyes begin to fail i'll swear they do wench enter guardiano aside i can but smile as often as i think on it how prettily the poor fool was beguiled how unexpectedly it's a witty age never were finer snares for women's honesties than are devised in these days no spider's webs made of a daintier thread than are now practised to catch love's flesh fly by the silver wing yet to prepare her stomach by degrees to cupid's feast because i saw twas queasy i showed her naked pictures by the way a bit to stay the appetite well advancement i venture hard to find thee if thou comest with a greater title set upon thy crest i'll take that first cross patiently and wait until some other comes greater than that i'll endure all the game's e'en at the best now you may see widow how all things draw to an end and so do i madam i pray take some of your neighbours along with you they must be those are almost twice your years then if they be chose fit matches for my time madam 
has not my duke bestirred himself yes faith madame has done me all the mischief in this game has showed himself in his kind in his kind call you it i may swear that yes faith and keep your oath aside hark list there's somebody coming down tis she enter bianca aside now bless me from a blasting i saw that now fearful for any woman's eye to look on infectious mists and mildews hang at's eyes the weather of a doomsday dwells upon him yet since mine honour's leprous why should i preserve that fair that caused the leprosy come poison all at once to guardiano thou in whose baseness the bane of virtue breeds i'm bound in soul eternally to curse thy smooth-browed treachery that wore the fair veil of a friendly welcome and i a stranger think upon't tis worth it murders piled up upon a guilty spirit at his last breath will not lie heavier than this betraying act upon thy conscience beware of offering the first fruits to sin his weight is deadly who commits with strumpets after they have been abased and made for use if they offend to the death as wise men know how much more they than that first make em so i give thee that to feed on i'm made bold now i thank thy treachery sin and i'm acquainted no couple greater and i'm like that great one who making politic use of a base villain he likes the treason well but hates the traitor so i hate thee slave well so the duke love me i fare not much amiss then two great feasts do seldom come together in one day we must not look for him what at it still mother you see me sit bite are you so soon returned aside so lively and so cheerful a good sign that you have not seen all since sure that have i mother the monument and all i'm so beholding to this kind honest courteous gentleman you'd little think it mother showed me all had me from place to place so fashionably the kindness of some people how it exceeds faith i have seen that i little thought to see in the morning when i rose nay so i told you before you sought it would prove worth your sight i give you great thanks for my daughter sir and all your kindness towards her oh good widow much good may do her aside forty weeks hence in faith enter servant now sir may it please you madame to walk in supper's upon the table yes we come will't please you gentlewomen thanks virtuous lady aside to livia you're a damned bawd i'll follow you forsooth pray take my mother in aside an old ass go with you this gentleman and i vow not to part then get you both before there lies his art Exeunt. widow i'll follow you is't so damned bawd are you so bitter tis but want of use her tender modesty is sea-sick a little being not accustomed to the breaking billow of woman's wavering faith blown with temptations tis but a qualm of honour twill away a little bitter for the time but lasts not sin tastes at the first draught like wormwood water but drunk again tis nectar ever after exit End of Act 2